for chemistry. This is a bit on equilibrium and talking about how reactions are reversible. And I'm sorry with where my camera is, my head's gonna get cut off. This is just the way it is. So what we wanted to go over, um, in case if you couldn't use the simulations I've done on, on FET and gizmos, or if you just wanted to hear a lecture, um, it's kind of hard to think about how reactions can go back and forth. Um, and sometimes when products are favored and sometimes when reactants are favored. So I wanted to show this with an energy diagram. So, and we've done these before, and this has been a while actually. So I want to do it this way. And this should ring a bit of a bell. So this is just, just progress of the reaction on the x-axis, and this is energy here. And if you look at this, and you remember, your reactants are shown here, and I'm just gonna draw an R, and then you've got to show how your reactants progress. And there's your products. So, and this is a pretty typical diagram, okay? Nothing special. And I'm gonna show things in different colors. So here's my reactants. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? So this is an exothermic reaction. And how do I know? My reactants start off with a higher potential energy. They get over the hump. And this hump is activation energy. So you have to give them some oomph in order for them to react. And once they get over that hump, they make products, okay? So let's just say we initially give one enough energy to get over the hump and we make one product. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. So how much energy is required, relatively speaking, to get over the hump? Well, we got a fair amount of a way to go there. But once it gets over, it releases a lot of energy. All processes on some level could be reversed. Um, and if you look at it, well, this product could get reversed over, but it's got a lot bigger of a bump to get back over in order to get reversed. So we could kick another one over here and make another one. And I'm just gonna have this process end at about seven and three. Why? I, I don't know, I'm lazy, okay? Um, but at some point you're gonna get things to level out um, where finally enough of your reactants don't have enough energy to get over the hump um, and enough products don't have enough uh, oomph to get back over. In fact, it might even be a little bit more likely if it was something like this. Because these reactants don't need as much energy to get over that hump as the products do need to get back to do reverse course to get back over. And that kind of makes sense. Okay. Well, what would happen if we changed the game just a teensy weensy little bit? And we draw a slightly different energy diagram. So get my purple back out. And why don't we put our reactants down here. And Here's our products. And we'll do red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's analyze this. So how are the re how hard is it going to be for the reactants to get over the hump? And the answer is not as hard. That's a smaller bump to get over. And so you could see a lot of these fly over at first because it's not a lot of 
energy to get over. So let's put five. So maybe a whole lot go flying over. But wait a minute. That's also not as big of a bump for the products to get back over. And so maybe a couple of these go ping-ponging back. So it's going to take a while for things to go back and forth to settle each to settle their way out because if you look at this well that's a small hump for the reactants to get over but that's not as big of a jump back for the products to get over either kind of makes sense so i don't know where the final spot's going to be but not hard to get over but not hard back to get over either one final scenario. Let's move it up just a little bit. And I like doing things that are a little ridiculous. Look at this. This is a huge bump for the reactants to get over. It's going to take a while and a lot of oomph to give your reactants enough energy to get over. Let's say we get one or two over. Let's be optimistic and get two. Okay. Is the process reversible? Yes, it is. Um, let's think about how much energy you're going to need to get out back over. Well, you're going to need this level plus a little bit extra. You're really going to have to kick a lot back and forth. Odds are you're not going to be able to kick a lot extra back over that hump. So what am I trying to show with these? Within reason, I mean, some processes, there's such a big difference between reactants and products that effectively, they're not reversible. I mean, your reactants are up here and your products are way down at the floor. You're not really going to reverse things. But within reason, most things can be reversed. Um... It's just the question of how big the energy difference is back and forth and how long it'll take to reestablish equilibrium. The cartoon is here to show you, like, hey, depending on where your reactants are, where your products are, and how big that activation energy hump between the two is, really determines how reversible the process is going to be. I'm going to show you the endothermic version of this and what it means to have two sides that are completely equal. Okay? Back in a flash.